Uh, my name is Francie Cuthbert, and I'm a professor at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Fisheries, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. And I got involved with piping plover research a number of years ago when I was a PhD student and where I worked, I sometimes encountered piping plovers. They were extremely rare at the time. Um, and I was intrigued and at some point um, realized that no one else was really um, focused on this group of birds and decided, well, I think I can do something. And so I started um, with my students uh, to try and, and increase the numbers and learn more um, about their biology. And that started um, my career. So um, there, there are a number of different areas that need to be targeted uh, to recover a species. First of all, the goal is to increase the size of a population to a point where it can be sustainable without um, human intervention. Um, and so there are a number of things that have to take place. First of all, the land needs to be protected. Where they're nesting, and in the case of the piping plover, where um, this population winters, which is in um, coastal uh, southeastern U.S., a little bit in the Bahamas, uh, one record in Cuba, and then up the Gulf Coast in Florida and all the way over to Texas with a few in Mexico. Another big component is education, public education. And that's something that Frontier is doing a terrific job with this endangered species campaign on the airplane tails. Research has been critical and um, that's something that's ongoing. One of these has been developing a program uh, that we call captive rearing um, that uh, basically rescues abandoned eggs. If an adult has died or if the nest is pushed out, um, the eggs are brought into captivity and incubated and the young are raised and then they're released back into the wild to supplement the, the population. When first listed, the population was very small. It was only 12, about 12 to 17 pairs. And now it's up um, as high as 70. Uh, 